Hi, pleasure meeting you all. This is your host Dr. Jagdish from Team Dental Lectures. In today's session, I am going to explain about hot tooth in endodontics and how to manage this hot tooth. Imagine a clinical situation where you are doing a root canal in a mandibular posterior teeth, especially a mandibular molars. While you are doing a root canal for a mandibular molars, when you give a inferior alveolar nerve block, the patient has profound anesthesia in ipsilateral tongue, lips and soft tissues. Whereas, while you are trying to do an access cavity preparation on the tooth, the patient suddenly jumps from the dental chair with an acute pain. Do you know why do this happen? So let's start the session. So before explaining the mechanism of hot tooth, let me give a brief idea about the perception of the pain and how the local anesthetic solution acts. What is the mechanism of action of a local anesthetic solution? If you observe a nerve membrane, it has sodium gated channels and a phospholipid bilayer. Whenever there is a stimulus, Whenever there is a stimulus, there is an influx of sodium ions from extracellular matrix towards inside of the cell. This causes depolarization of the nerve membrane such that there is a generation of action potential and there is a generation of impulse to a central nervous system. Thereby, you will have a pain. So, if you observe the mechanism of action of local anesthetic, these local anesthetic solution blocks these sodium gated channels. These local anesthetic solution blocks the sodium gated channel such that there won't be influx of sodium ions. Since the sodium ions are required for the depolarization, since there is a blockage of sodium ion influx, there won't be generation of depolarization. So, there won't be a generation of action potential. Ultimately, there is no generation of impulses to the central nervous system. It is nothing but a brain. So, finally, there is no pain perception. So, local anesthesia or numbness is achieved. This is the mechanism how the local anesthetic works. I repeat, when a local anesthetic solution acts on a sodium gated channels, it blocks the sodium gated channels such that there won't be influx of sodium ions such that prevention of depolarization, thereby no generation of action potential, no generation of impulses to the central nervous system such that local anesthetic effect or numbness is achieved, thereby no perception of pain. Now I am going to explain about the actual mechanism of hot tooth. Coming to the definition, a tooth that is difficult to anesthetize is known as hot tooth. I repeat, a tooth that is difficult to anesthetize is known as hot tooth. Most commonly seen in mandibular molars. Basically, the sodium gated channels which are present on the nerve membrane are tetrodotoxin sensitive. I repeat, the sodium gated channels which are present on the nerve membrane are usually tetrodotoxin sensitive. In neuroinflammatory conditions, in neuroinflammatory conditions like irreversible pulpitis, and abscess. I repeat, usually the sodium gated channels which are present in the nerve membranes are tetrodotoxin sensitive. In neuroinflammatory conditions like irreversible pulpitis and abscess, these tetrodotoxin 
दीज टेट्राडोटॉक्सिन सेंसिटिव आर कन्वर्टेड इंटू टेट्राडोटॉक्सिन रेसिस्टेंट आई रिपीट in neuro inflammatory conditions like irreversible pulpitis and anapsis these tetrodotoxin sensitive sodium gated channels are converted into tetrodotoxin resistant channels these tetrodotoxin resistant or resistant to normal la that is lignocaine in normal doses i repeat these tetrodotoxin resistant are resistant to normal la in normal doses that is nothing but lignocaine these tetrodotoxin resistant require 5 to 6 times the normal la that means per suppose in a normal patient if you give a la of 2 ml it is sufficient to achieve anesthesia whereas in case of neuro inflammatory conditions like abscess and irreversible pulpitis you need to give minimum 5 to 6 times of normal la that is nothing but lignocaine lignocaine in order to get a profound anesthesia i repeat in a normal individual where the sodium gated channels are tetrodotoxin sensitive normal dose of la which is 2 ml is sufficient to achieve the profound anesthesia whereas in neuro inflammatory conditions like abscess and irreversible pulpitis you need to give 5 to 6 times in order to achieve anesthesia with a normal lignocaine coming to the management of hot tooth according to the grossman bupivacaine is found to be more potent than lignocaine especially in case of hot tooth according to the grossman bupivacaine is more potent when compared to the lignocaine in case of achieving anesthesia in case of hot tooth and other options include you need to give a supplementary injections like intraligamentary or pedial injections intraosseous injections and intrapalpal injection in intraligamentary injection you will inject the local anesthetic solution suppose this is a molar intra ligamentary or pedial injection you will inject a anesthetic solution on a mesial and distal side that means in interproximal surfaces in interproximal surfaces that means on mesial and distal side you will inject an anesthetic solution of 0.2 ml it is the most effective technique in case of hot tooth you need to use 27 gauge needle 0.2 ml anesthetic solution in both mesial and distal interproximal spaces and the anesthesia will last for 27 minutes i repeat intraligamentary injection or a pedial injection should be given in interproximal spaces that means in mesial and distal sides of a multiruted tooth with a 20 gauge needle of 0.2 ml it has a profound anesthesia for 27 minutes iamb has a success rate of less than 50% to be precise 44% so you need to give a pedial injection which has a success rate of 92% i repeat pedial or intraligamentary injection has success rate of 92% especially when you use articaine articaine should be used as intraligamentary or a pedial injection you will get a 92% success in achieving anesthesia
If you fail to achieve anesthesia with a PDL or internal ligamentary injection, try to give for the second time such that you will get 100% anesthesia. Even though you fail to achieve anesthesia with internal ligamentary or PDL injection, next you can go for intraosseous injection where you drill a hole into the bone and directly insert the needle into the perforated bone and deliver the local anesthetic solution directly into the bone. This is intraosseous injection. Coming to the intrapulpal injection, when you expose any pinpoint exposure of a pulp while doing an access cavity, you take a syringe and prevent the syringe and try to insert into that exposure site such that you will get a pulpal anesthesia. It is the most efficient technique in achieving a pulpal anesthesia but it is a little painful injection so care should be taken in giving ultra pulpal injection. I repeat when you expose a pinpoint per suppose Take a number two round bar and try to enter into the pulp chamber a pinpoint exposure of a pulp. When there is a pinpoint exposure of a pulp, take a syringe and prevent the needle. Insert into that exposure site and try to inject slowly into the exposure site such that you will get a pulpal anesthesia. So to conclude, a tooth which is difficult to get anesthetized is known as hot tooth. The mechanism behind the hot tooth is usually the sodium gated channels are tetrodotoxin sensitive. In case of neuroinflammatory conditions like abscess and irreversible pulpitis, these tetrodotoxin sensitive are converted into tetrodotoxin resistant. So, these are resistant to normal doses of LA. You need to give 5 to 6 times of normal dose in order to achieve a profound anesthesia using a normal LA. If you go for the management, bupivacaine is a more potent anesthetic solution when compared to lignocaine in case of a hot tooth management. And coming to the supplementary injections, you have intraligamentary injections, intraosseous and intrapulpal injection. So in case of a hot tooth, if you fail to achieve anesthesia with inferior alveolar nerve block, then go for supplementary injections like intraligamentary injection which has a success rate of 92%, especially if you use articaine. Even though if you fail to get anesthesia, you go for the second time of intraligamentary injection such that you will get 98 to 100% of pulpal anesthesia. In later stages, if you fail to get pulpal anesthesia, go for intraosseous or intrapulpal anesthesia. Hope you enjoyed the session. Thank you.